Welcome to the Brain Over Binge Podcast, where you learn a simple brain-based approach to ending binge eating. I'm Katherine Hansen. Today, I'm here again with our Brain Over Binge coach, Julie Mann. Julie is going to come on the show once per month to talk about a variety of topics that will help you as you're stepping into freedom from binging. These topics are ones that she explores in detail with the members of our Brain Over Binge group. She teaches a powerful lesson on every group call and guides the amazing members in applying what they're learning. And we wanted to give you a taste of that here on the podcast as well. Julie's going to share some of the key ideas from these lessons so that you can use the concepts in your own life and in your own recovery. And then if you want more help, Julie offers life-changing support within the group, both on the forum and on the group calls. At any point, if you want to learn more about that, you can go to brainoverbinge.com forward slash group. And there's also a link in the show description. And I also want to let you know that you can get one-on-one coaching from Julie as well. And she has availability during the holidays or any time to give you that personalized guidance. And you can sign up for one-on-one coaching at brainoverbinge.com forward slash one, the word one, dash on, dash one, dash coaching. And that link will be in the show description as well. So with all of that being said, I want to welcome Julie to the show. Hi, Catherine. I'm so happy to be back. Yes, definitely. I think this topic today is going to be really timely because we're going to be talking about your future self. And I think it's so important because at this point, people are starting to plan what 2022 is going to look like for them. And they're starting to think about what goals they want to accomplish. So helping people really create that vision is going to be very useful. If you're someone who's trying to overcome binge eating, I know that you likely have a resolution to become binge free in 2022. And this episode is going to help you start creating that binge free version of yourself. And you definitely do not have to wait until 2022 to do that. You can start that now. I love the way that Julie teaches the group members to focus on who they want to be in the future. And I'm really excited for her to help you start to do that as well. Catherine, that's such a great point. I'm glad that you raised it that whole notion of resolutions and, you know, waiting until January 1st or waiting till after the holidays are over or waiting until all of that versus this idea that you can just start right now. You can just start stepping into that future version of you who's already there right now, just with the next choice. So everybody listening, that's available to you now. And so that's one of the things that I love to teach about with this idea of connecting with our future self, because for so long, when I was struggling over 40 years, I'd start Monday, I'd start tomorrow, I'd start in the new year, I'd start in the next month. You know, I love these fresh starts, these first dates, the first of the year, Rosh Hashanah, whatever it was. And the reality is that Every moment is a chance to begin again and step towards that future version of us. And so one of the things that I love to teach my clients is that it's as simple as remembering that that future version of you, you're just moving towards her or him right now with every choice and that you're always facing in that direction. This is just where you are right now. It's neutral. It's just your starting point and you're just moving towards that future version of you. Every choice that you make, it's just a learning moment. So you eat a little bit too much, no big deal. You just ask yourself, what went well? What didn't go well? What will I do differently? And then you get right back towards moving towards that future version of you. And the other thing that I love to explain is that One of the ways to connect with that future version of you is to do what I like to call it future self journaling or future self visualizing. So that's a practice that I engage in every single day and it doesn't take me a long time. And now it's not about eating choices, but for a long time it was. So I would imagine myself at the end of the day or at the end of the week and how I felt and I would connect with that version of her and I would write myself a letter from that future version of me to my current self, telling her how the day went or how the week went and all of the times that I expected and allowed urges, any discomfort I might've experienced, and then how I moved through it and all the benefits I got on the other side and how I was feeling in that moment, peaceful, in my integrity, with great digestion, you know, hungry for meals with my child, whatever it was. That's a really powerful exercise 
to try out. And so everyone listening, you, you can try that right now. Just really connect with that future version of you. And if you don't like to journal, then just close your eyes and visualize that future version of you. Yeah, Julie, that's such a helpful exercise. And it's something like you said, yeah, you don't have to wait until January to start visualizing who you want to be and how you want to move beyond this habit that's really held you back for a long time. Um, I want to ask you a few questions. One thing that comes up for me as we talk about resolutions is that a lot of people have resolutions about weight. And this can really affect people in recovery because once you start dieting, restricting food, that's when you know you really set that binge cycle in motion again. So we don't want this future self vision to include unrealistic expectations about your weight. So can you talk about that in a way that people can reframe this in a healthy way that supports recovery? Yeah, sure. And I always say to take weight out of the equation. We know weight's a motivator for many, many people. You don't need it as a motivator. We just take it out of the equation. And we remember that as you eat consistently, as you expect and allow urges, as you do this consistently over time, if you have weight to lose slowly, eventually, it'll start to trend downwards. However, that future version of you really doesn't care about your weight. I just want to put that out there, that the future version of you who isn't binging and who eats consistently doesn't think much about food or weight, actually, because they're too busy living life. And when you are connecting with that future version of you, instead of putting all the emphasis on the weight, what else can you emphasize? Just thinking back to the last podcast that we did when we were talking about being life-focused, what aspects of your life are you fully engaged in? Are you deeply involved in your relationships? Are you doing amazingly well at work because you have your whole brain back? Imagine those outcomes for yourself. Yeah, Julie, and I'm so glad you mentioned that podcast. And for anyone listening who has not heard that, it's episode 87, and that's the last podcast Julie and I did together. It's called Start Desiring a Binge-Free Life. If you feel kind of stuck right now, if you feel like you you know, really need to fuel that desire for a life beyond binging, that episode will really give you some good ideas about how to focus your energy and your time into this new version of yourself. So I'll link that in the show description. And I mentioned, you know, people who feel stuck. And Julie, that's something I I think we can end on here is what if people feel so stuck in their behaviors and it's just causing so much pain in their life that it does not even feel possible to think about a future without binging? Like, how would you speak to someone who's going through that? Well, I think, first of all, as I mentioned earlier, we're all just one choice away from stepping towards that future version of ourselves. That's the first thing. And the second thing is that whole notion of being stuck, and I put that in air quotes, comes from how you're thinking about your choices. So if you're just one choice away from that future version of you, and you're always on your way towards him or her, just right now, lean into that person who's already free and make your next choice as if you are that person. And I'll just add that if you're really feeling like this is just an impossibility, coaching is a great option. Coaching can really help with getting unstuck, giving you some personalized ways to move forward, either through our group or through one, one-on-one or some other form of coaching. But that's a wonderful way to start moving forward. I know that total freedom is possible for everyone. I know it's possible. And I always think about my clients as if they are already that person now. Yeah, Julie, that makes so much sense. It's like you make decisions based on who you want to be and who you visualize yourself to be. And when when you view yourself as that person, then you're going to make choices that support your recovery and that support the life that you want. Exactly. And another thing about journaling from your future self, visualizing yourself in that way That's a wonderful way to get unstuck if you're feeling stuck because you start to connect with the energy of that person. Our brains are so highly programmable. And so when you repeat, I'm stuck, I can't move forward, that's what you create for yourself versus I'm moving towards the future version of me. I'm one step away, you know, and so really connecting with that future version of you who's already free visualizing him or her every day, writing from her every single day, it's going to start to shift the energy towards that 
person. And you're going to start taking actions from that place. Yeah, totally. One thing I love that you remind people is that it's a practice and it's messy. The future version of yourself will not be perfect. Yeah, a hundred percent. In fact, the future version of you, I'd love it if you all start visualizing him or her as a person who embraces imperfections and sees them as the way to grow and learn because they're just part of everything in life. I totally agree. And I think that dropping that perfectionism is so important in recovery. And a great topic for our next call. In fact, Catherine, I think in January, embracing that perfectly imperfect version of ourselves is a great topic. It is. So hopefully we'll be back in January with a episode about imperfection and embracing that. So for today, I think this was a great conversation. I love conversations about your future self. I hope that you internalize a lot of what you heard and that you can use it in your recovery to start creating that vision of yourself as a binge-free person. And thank you so much, Julie, for joining me today. And I look forward to our next episode together. I do too. That's the end of my conversation with Julie. And what's amazing is that right after we recorded this episode, we got the most wonderful feedback from a Brain Over Binge group member. Her name is Emma, and she is having amazing success in the group. Emma gave me permission to share what she wrote with all of you. Emma said, I just want to express gratitude for your program. It's been so nice to have somewhere to turn in one of the darkest times of my life. The group of people that I'm getting to know on the calls and in the forum are absolutely amazing humans who support and lift me every single day. One of them being Julie. She is phenomenal at leading calls with compassion and consideration, but also is well equipped with reminding us to question our thoughts. She has a gift with people. There's no better way to put it. I'm in my third month of being binge free, but also shame free from not eating perfectly. It's been the most liberating experience of my life, gradually letting go of perfectionism and seeing myself in a new light. Like Julie always says, we're all just perfectly imperfect human beings and that's okay. No one will ever fully understand how much that has helped change the trajectory of my life. I'm confident in saying that binge eating has exited my life and I'm not turning back. And it, in large part, has to do with the love and support of Julie and the Brain Over Binge community. Thank you so much for putting in the work to make this community possible. As I choose to use it each day, it is changing my life. Thank you so much, Emma, for sharing that and keep up the amazing work. You're a wonderful example of someone who is stepping into a new version of yourself, who no longer wastes time and energy on binging. If anyone listening is interested in joining the Brain Over Binge group, you can go to brainoverbinge.com forward slash group to learn more and to sign up. And if you are interested in one-on-one coaching, you can go to brainoverbinge.com forward slash one, the word one, dash on, dash one, dash coaching. And those links will be in the show description as well. I really appreciate you being here today and I hope you'll join me again soon. And as always, I want to encourage you and remind you that you have the power to change your brain and live a binge-free life. The Brain Over Binge podcast is produced and recorded by Brain Over Binge Recovery Coaching, LLC. All work is copyrighted by Brain Over Binge Recovery Coaching, LLC, and all rights are reserved. As a disclaimer, the hosts of the Brain Over Binge podcast are not professional counselors or licensed healthcare providers, and this podcast is not a substitute for medical advice or any form of professional therapy. Eating disorders can have serious health consequences, and you are strongly advised to seek medical attention for matters relating to your health. Please get help when you need it, and good luck on your journey.